Bed Belly are hearing? That means it's supper time, and boy, am I hungry. The name's Orange, or at least that's what they call me now. My real name is long forgotten, just like everything else about who I was before. I'm a whole nother animal now, except for one thing. My hunger remains. It all started not too long ago. Back then, I was big, powerful, but scared out of my wits. I was deceived by a lie, a promise of the greatest meal of all time. And now I found myself running for my life. I flew past the corner and found a box to hide in. Hey buddy, where are you? Don't you want to be our friend? I had evaded blue. I thought I was in the clear. But Green followed closely behind. You see, Green was blind. But the second he got his fingers on you, you were done for. And unfortunately for me, he was right on my path. I moved the box slowly, careful not to make a sound. But I couldn't see a thing. And I messed up. Green grabbed me and brought me back to the lab. Green was a dutiful servant. To him, the man in charge. He smiled at me, and I could tell then and there that he was pure evil. They tossed me in a machine, and as the motors whirred and the sparks flew, my body was full and stretched in every which way. The last thing I remember was a very bright light. My ears were ringing as my light flashed before my eyes. I thought back to my life on the farm. Kids, dinner's ready. It was a simple life, but there were a lot of mouths to feed besides my own. But we made do, as best as we could. Thing is, when everyone else had cleared their plates, I was left unsatisfied. I was still hungry. Mom was worried about me, but they didn't have the means to indulge my desires. She reminded me that they had animals to feed too. And this gave me an idea. It wasn't dignified, I'll give you that. But I couldn't stop. My dad had caught me and boy, did he let me have it. So I decided then and there, if I can't eat their food, I could always just eat them. It seemed as though I had gone too far. I didn't understand. I was being self-sufficient. Did they just expect me to sit by a dog bowl and wait for my food to be delivered on some sort of set schedule? <clears throat> Never. My habit had gotten so bad in their eyes that they decided to send me off to boarding school. The first day started off very scary for me. I was worried about being the odd one out. But then I realized I was huge, big, and powerful. This filled me with a sense of pride. At the cafeteria, the lunch lady gave me a meager serving, and I devoured it all in one big old bite. The others thought this was awesome. That I was awesome. Those guys offered up their own lunches just to watch the spectacle, and I happily obliged. Downing tray after tray, there was no rule against sharing, you see. It went against the values of the school. <laughs> But I don't think the teachers like this little loophole. But whether they were happy, I couldn't care less. Because this was the happiest I had ever been. Until I found out the truth. I thought they liked me for who I was. Turns out, I was just a sideshow. A freak. They threw out names like Hungry Hungry Hippo and the Trash Compactor. I had considered my gift to be something special about me. But turns out, everyone else thought it was just plain weird. Except, perhaps, for one girl. She was really nice. In fact, she even offered to help me change my ways. She showed me all sorts of stuff. Salads, jogging, diet shakes, yoga, herbal tea, swimming. I hated them all. It was the absolute worst and went against my entire nature. She tried, but I knew deep down that it wasn't me. 
I made up my mind. If I couldn't become thin like everyone seemed to want me to, then I would get even bigger to spite them all. I went on a quest that day to become the world's largest man. My family held a hot dog eating contest at the farm. I sweat so hard that they had to travel 15 miles just to pick up more dogs. And it didn't stop there. News of my decisive victory spread throughout the paper. People wanted to watch me perfect my craft. I went from show to show and I creamed them all. Anyways, throughout it all, the same girl tagged along. She, despite her best efforts to change me, really cared about me deep down. It felt so good to be loved by someone for who I was. As I won more and more competitions, I became something of a celebrity. I was on the top of the world, and at last I had done it. I was officially the world's largest man, and I felt good. One day, I got a phone call from the family that sent me away all those years ago. Hello, honey. Your father and I saw you on the television again. You looked happy. But, son, you're not healthy. Please, come home. We can help you work through your issues. We love you. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I thought they might have called to beg me for money, sure, but this? What issues? I was fine. I was famous and big. My friends saw me go off on my mother in a fit of rage. I really let her have it. This was the final straw. She told me that she didn't like what I was turning into, that the fame had gotten to my head, that I was becoming a monster. I showed her the door, and as she cried her tearful goodbye, I was already on the phone again, ordering myself a pizza. Until I caught a look at myself. In the mirror, I had become unrecognizable, even to myself. And of course, my only solace was found in more food. More and more, I spiraled out of control. I could only think of her. Even as I shoveled more and more food into my mouth, I saw her in my spaghetti. I saw her in my fries. I saw her in my plate, right next to the mashed potatoes and gravy. I even saw her in my low-cal diet soda. This continued on and on until I could no longer enjoy my meals. I was at rock bottom. This all changed when I got one more phone call. Hello, is this the world's largest man? Not anymore. I'm retired. I can't eat like I used to. Nonsense. You just haven't found the right meal yet. Not to worry. I have one to die for. The man on the phone's offer intrigued me, and like the fool I was, I arranged a meeting. I was met with the most lavish meal I'd ever laid eyes on, and it was all you could eat. Thoughts of my lost love faded away as I rekindled my joy of eating. I was in heaven. Something seemed off, though. The two waiters were wearing sheets over their heads, and one of them kept bumping into the table. I thought it must have just been some weird uniform, and maybe it was the clumsy one's first day, until it came time for dessert. I hope you're ready, friend, because now it's time for your final treat. Or should I say, trick. The waiters came to the side of the man and took off their coverings. Before me stood two of the scariest things I'd ever laid eyes on. Sure, in another context, they might not have been all that bad, but here, they looked like they were going to eat me. Wh what's happening? Stay away! I ran and ran, and in that moment, I wished I had followed my friend's advice all those years ago. I was found by Green, put into the man's machine, and turned into Orange, the newest rainbow friend. During the transformation, my body rejected the years of mass that I had built up and expunged it, even as my form became narrow and skinny. I was small now, the smallest of the Rainbow Friends. My pride would have been hurt, but all I knew in that moment was that I was hungry, hungrier than I had ever been. After that, they arranged feeding times, and if one were to ever be missed, an alarm would sound, and I would come running for a proper meal. 
Unfortunately, most people were timely with their supper deliveries. Which brings us to today. One woman has finally forgotten to feed me, and now I'm nearly upon my first prey. I got you now! <laughs> Please don't! I'm looking for my friend! Please! No! No! Not you! Why did it have to be you? I can't help it! Forgive me! 